Uh, welcome everyone to my second YouTube show. Um, I am so honored today and excited to have Robert of Akasha Attunements on the show. And I've personally experienced an amazing Akashic reading from Robert, and I'll talk about that more later in the show. And um, Robert, um, I wonder if you, you could tell us a little bit about what the Akashic, Akashic, I say Akashic, <laughs> Akashic <laughs> records are. <laughs> I'm sure you know how to pronounce it. <laughs> yeah. It's Akashic. Uh... Okay, Kashuk record. Or you could you could actually refer to it as the Akash if you want Akash. to. Akash. Okay. So the records are the records of kind of your fingerprint or footprint within the Akash, which is a universal and quantum energy. Uh, but that's exactly right. It's uh, the Akashic records are a divine energetic record of all of your lifetimes, all of your actions, all of your experiences, intentions, emotions, and things like that through your many incarnations here on earth. So that's awesome. That's awesome. Well what what brought you into beginning to read Akashic Records? What what sparked your interest or led you there to to begin doing this work? Well, I always had um, a fascination with the records. I think I was first introduced to it when I started doing some reading on Edgar Cayce. And uh, I found myself uh, just being fascinated with it. And then in the early 1990s, I went to a mind, body, spirit kind of health expo up here. And there was an internationally known reader who gave a presentation and he was published he had a book and so on and um, but I was fascinated with some of the things that he talked about in terms of um, time being non-linear kind of within the higher dimensional scales such as 5d and that type of a thing and that in fact we could um, have a lifetime where our lifetimes weren't necessarily linear. So we could actually, for example, have one in the future and then we could come back to the past and that type of a thing. But always with a great purpose. And, um, and we'll talk about our blueprint and purposes and things like that. But um, <clears throat> of course he was signing books that day. So I went up, of course, to get one of his books. And then he looked at me and he said that, uh, he told me immediately something about one of my past lives and it made perfect sense. And uh, a number of things kind of fell in place and I thought that was amazing, that was remarkable. So at that moment in time, I kind of made it part of my path to learn how to open my own records and then learn how to open the records of other people, so. Wonderful, Oops, I'm glad you learned that skill. Because <laughs> <laughs> I benefited from that. Um, have you noticed any shifts occurring within you since you began uh, reading the Akash? Uh, in terms of reading my own Akash, yeah. Um, there's a great deal of understanding that I was able to gain in terms of uh, relationships and my path kind of within this lifetime. and. Um, I had, uh, years ago, I had um, a number of challenging personal relationships as well as professional relationships. And after I learned how to open my own records, I um, was able to kind of discover why it is that I had, you know, agreed to, you know, uh, come in and meet with these people and what the issues were. And that's one of the things that the records can provide for you. There is oftentimes an understanding, but there's an understanding oftentimes that'll provide a healing of the heart. And so there's empowerment, but there's also, oftentimes there's also, hopefully there is a peace relative to um, an issue that you have or uh, a challenge that you have. Right, right, so true. I know I experienced some of that, and um, uh, I also wondered, once a person starts to read the Akash, 
does their own personal intuition just grow and in general you know they open up and they're more you know psychically aware they're well yeah it does um your understanding of yourself obviously expands but there is a a connection there's a better there's a more clear connection with this higher self your higher consciousness I think of it as the soul aspect of ourselves. So you begin to build and kind of strengthen the relationship between kind of yourself within our 3D here and with the higher self. And so you begin to transcend the veil. And so the veil, of course, by virtue of our changing energy on Earth now is becoming more transparent. But you... Um, you begin to move into the multi-dimensional aspect of yourself and your intuition follows with that. Right, and by multi-dimensional, you mean on all levels and all space and time, even though there's no such thing and there's no linear. Yeah, um, it's more of a- Just can tap into the, all of it or all well, of your- Yeah, tapping into kind of your soul and yeah, the, the magnificence of your soul right. so in the winds of birth our soul splits and part of it comes with us here into the 3d the major part of our soul remains on the other side of the veil and of course we're always on this path to reconnect and remember our magnificence so. right exactly exactly well i i know i had a wonderful reading with you it was back in September of 2021, just 10 months ago. And I learned so much from that. And it changed me in so many ways that I unexpectedly just hearing some of those things that you covered, I had no idea it would shift me so much. But like I learned that I had 353 lives. Um, that I lived 130 lives as a female, 123 as a male. So I guess I'm pretty balanced with that, hopefully. And um, that my Akashic Records guardian was is Mary Magdalene's mother, which I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> 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 because I'm always feeling like I'm connected to the divine feminine as some of, of what I'm bringing in. And um, so Mary Magdalene, Mother Mary, all that, those energies of compassion and um, divine love, I feel connected to. But um, I asked you if I had a lifetime when Jesus walked on the earth. And I, I just wondered if you remembered what you told me about that. I, I don't remember specifically what I told you about that. I, <laughs> so. that. It was very interesting and it was it made sense to me. I was a man and I um, just listened to Jesus talk and I did, you know, go to where he was speaking and I really appreciated what he was saying and that's probably the basis of why I feel connected to that kind of energy, the Christ energy, or um, that kind of thing. But I just want to say that after that reading, just everything <laughs> opened up. I, I don't know what to say. Here I am on a YouTube channel, and I have a website. And I ha can't say that I ever sat down and designed a plan to do any of this. It's just one thing came and another thing came and another thing came and here i am i didn't question it i just went forward and it got propelled forward and i look back at the reading and i think it just got things out of my way i guess i don't even know i mean is that possible <laughs> yeah and um sometimes we'll have a trauma which is kind of resident within our kosh and with the reading what you want to do is you kind of want to uh, if 
find out what the origin of that trauma is. And you don't have to re-experience it. You just have to have, know where it is and what it is. And then what happens is, is that when we bring that information to our conscious level, that energy, which is resonating kind of within the Akash, and because it's in the Akash, it's actually in each one of our cells in our body, because that's one of the places the Akash is, it tends to release itself, it tends to dissipate and resolve itself. And so to some degree, um, you might have blockages all of a sudden, it begins to clear unconscious part of us, which tends to be a big driver in terms of what we're doing as well. So, um, right. But you brought up, uh, you previously brought up some interesting points. Is is that about your male and your and your female, or your lives as male? And we do, roughly speaking, we half of our lifetimes are spent mastering being female, and half are spent mastering being male, and um, uh, that's part of the soul's intent and perfection. We tend to have many lifetimes you might have 20 or 25 lifetimes as a male and then the soul will decide well now I need to kind of experience things from this other perspective and so then you'll have multiple incarnations as a female right right and isn't that the male side of me is that outward going side that would stand would would start a YouTube channel (laughs) and I haven't really been in that outward going not for a large percentage of my life in this kind of way putting myself out there and one of my one of the things that i said in the in the reading that i have with you is that i didn't feel safe in the world or i didn't feel like if i'm putting myself out there was not was risky (laughs) or something to that effect and and for some reason it just went away and I don't feel like that I just don't feel any self-consciousness or reserve about any of it anymore yeah well and there might have been a lifetime that you ended up being burned at the stake for, oh undoubtedly or, or hung because, <laughs> you were, because you uh went up against the powers to be or oh totally or I'm spoke sure. your truth, or or whatever the case may be. You mentioned your lifetime with um, that you had walked the earth at the same time as Jesus of Nazareth, and many people that I've done readings for, um, uh, that's uh, that's the case with them as well. Oh, is that right? And, oh, and so um, yeah. many of the people that I've done readings for were also shared some part of their life. Well. Jesus of Nazareth with here and sometimes they were profound experiences yeah. sometimes it might have been a spark that kind of lit the match for their own spiritual journey going forward in terms of other lifetimes and things like this right. so right very true very true um, I, I also wanted to know you know for those out there who might be thinking about learning how to read the Akash do you feel tired after you're, you've done a long uh, reading for someone? Does that, you know, is it something you can only do so many in a day or? <clears throat> um, it's something that I can only sustain for um, like probably a maximum of two hours at yeah. any one time. What happens is, is that you tend to experience a duality of consciousness. One part of your consciousness is kind of in the ethers. And then of course your analytical or human brain is engaged because you're having this dialogue. You're having a conversation with the person and they have their questions and that type of a thing. And so that's the only part that I found a little bit tiring. And the, um, but at the same time, when you're in the energy of the Akash, it's an energetic it, it's an energizing you'll yeah. experience the energy yeah. so. you know i i experienced something like that when i channel divine blueprint paintings for people 
I'm trying, I'm receiving all those energies in and it can only be sustained for a certain amount of time till that other brain kicks in and then I know I'm just too tired and I've got to stop. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's probably true for a lot of people who do that kind of thing. Um, but you're right, the divine energies, those beautiful energies are wonderful to be in and they are enriching to you here on this earth plane. Um, so what do you do to regenerate your energy level? Do you do anything special, meditate or what? Um, get out in nature? <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's um, I like to do that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I do meditate on a daily basis. Um, I do a little bit of Qigong. Well, I do Qigong every day. I love Qigong. I, I've yeah. never seen anything make your energy flow like crazy once you start doing that. It's 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 amazing, and yes. so um, I kind of picked up on that years ago, and so that helps. Oh yeah, that just yeah. opens your flows. And as you know, it's also very balancing. So um, yeah, movement like that with a purpose is so phenomenal. I should do it more. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, so that's a fantastic way to regenerate and recharge. There's no doubt about that. Um, when you read the Akash, um, you see many lifetimes where people incarnate into the same family group. I'm sure you get this question a lot, but some people out there might not know that if you go into a family group, do you change roles? Do you stay in that same family group? Or how big a family group do we have? Or is that even a thing <laughs> to learn our lessons from different well, perspectives? Yeah, yeah. We certainly tend to uh, incarnate with many of the same people. And these people tend to be within our soul group. And as you say, we have different relationships. It might be um, a mother-daughter, and then all of a sudden it will reverse. All of a sudden the daughter becomes the mother in another lifetime, and the role is reversed. Or it could very well be that the same two beings share a adult or a married relationship. And so we tend to, um, we tend to have many lifetimes with the same people. Sometimes there'll be karmic issues that develop. And then of course we agree to come together with the other person in order to resolve whatever the karma is. And karma is kind of going away now in our new energy, but in the past we tended to, if there were things that we were dead, uh, karma tends to be an energy of imbalance that we picked up when we were doing something we shouldn't have been doing. And um, so oftentimes people will say to us, uh, on the other side, within our blueprint and our plan, we'll agree to incarnate with someone so that they can resolve the karma that they have relative to you. We'll also make agreements with people to assist them with their lessons in their lifetime. So for example, many people that I have done readings for, they have said that they don't feel connected to their family of origin. And, but, <laughs> so that's very, very common. But it also makes, very, it makes sense because uh, as a light worker, as an older soul, you probably made an agreement that you would work with a younger soul for the purposes of mentoring and teaching and supporting. And um, sometimes that can be a bumpy road on this <laughs> within the human condition, but we agreed to it, so. True, true. Um, I have to say, oh, you said something that resonated so strongly with me just now about karma. And I felt the same thing that karma is going away. And I wonder, is it become, because we're embodying more of our soul or our higher self, is it, I mean? Well, it's a system that was actually 
born in uh, born in love, and that is to say that it was a system that was developed, and we all agreed to it. Um, that it would in, it would uh, it was intended to get us to um, move in the right direction, to engage the appropriate people for the relevant issues that we were going to deal with or needed to deal with for the purposes of growth and um, so and that's kind of that um, the system right we're moving into a state now and the newer energies where that's not needed so because we, we don't need something kind to babysit of, us or yeah to, to kind of push us <laughs> to kind of pull us along we don't need that anymore so, so the energy is more cohesive and spread and sped up and we're moving at a pace where things just happen there isn't any time for um long kickbacks of lessons and all of that. it just happens all now you know you have a result right now um i have no other way to explain it but it does happen um do we so then when I, my next question kind of got answered because i i was going to ask do we carry lessons from lifetime to lifetime and for for now the souls that are coming in are probably these older souls who already have the gifts and knowledge and they're coming in to sh shift the world so they aren't bringing in some bad stuff <laughs> they're probably well, yeah yes and no um for example uh many uh, many of the people that i'm doing readings with you know they are older souls and um the reason that they're talking to me is simply because there's a level of awareness that all of a sudden they begin to remember they understand the akash and so that lifetime um as it is as it was or is with me we tended to load up, have loaded up our plates in this particular lifetime. So in other words, we chose to kind of, um, there were chapters, there were things that we wanted to close the book on, to clean up prior to our ascension. Um, and so the old souls actually, uh, oftentimes there's a lot of issues that they came in with on their plate. Yeah. But in terms of a given life lesson, yeah, sometimes there's a life lesson that we won't master in a single lifetime. It may take a couple of lifetimes to master a lesson. Uh, the lesson of not being defined by someone else or some other power or authority. So standing in your own power and your own belief system, that's a big life lesson. Big. big. Yeah, it is. <laughs> So. For all of us, really. <laughs> oh, that's a huge one. Just being able to not have someone else's opinion of you change how you feel about yourself is so major. Um, you know, and, you know, that whenever you get these ideas for creative things and you go, you start something that you can keep that momentum going with creativity, joy, inspiration, and stay on the, uh, you know. Well, duality. I guess I should have asked you about duality. Is duality kind of, I don't know if you should say going away, but that yin and yang or that light and dark, is it just something that the earth plane has and you just have to, learn how to stay in balance with it or along with karma is that well yeah in, <clears throat> in terms of the energies on the earth right now that of light and dark I mean um, the light workers are here to raise the light quotient and uh, there has been a dark energy of control on the planet for millennia and that is an old order of energy that is dying a really difficult death. But I'm confident when, and of course we experience that and kind of everything that we're hearing on the news nowadays. 
but I'm confident that the, the light is winning at the battle. Mm -hmm. And if you're incarnate now, you have great purpose here. And so you're part of this solution. You're part of bringing your own light forward, your own gifts forward, and kind of raising the light on the planet. So right. That's exciting. Um, and, you know, it's nice to know that there are so many people out there doing light work and, you know, shifting the energy for the planet. And um, I feel good about that. I see so many people doing it and I think it's made a huge difference just even in like the war going on with Russia and Ukraine, just everybody sending out this energy, you know, of love and peace. It is. It is. If, um, what's interesting, I mean, obviously that conflict is a very horrific thing. and. Um, but as you'll notice is that there's a tremendous humanitarian response. So there's a response of love and compassion to basically all the inhumanity that's a result of it. And I'm not sure that we would have experienced that before. True. That's so in a sense, <laughs> so in a sense that response is kind of raising the energy and it's raising the light here for us. Right. Right, it's raising awareness to that, you know, what what we're choosing to bring in, what we want for our planet, and um, so, do we ourselves create our divine plan when we come in, or do we have to sit with a council and figure it out, or do we just plan it ourselves? I think uh, I think it could go either way. I think that uh, obviously our life blueprint is that plan by which the soul is going to experience what it would desire to experience for the growth that it's seeking. And so I think that we, from the soul, I think our soul plans it, and then I think we do it with a little bit of help. I think we. <laughs> I think I think we run it past um, yeah. <laughs> some some of the elders. I think we run the whole idea past maybe a counselor or two. Because you know everything sounds good up there, you know, on that <laughs> level. You're all like, yeah, that sounds good. Let's go in and do yeah, that. Yeah, and, and, I, and I've I've known I've known people that really loaded up their plate too much, and it turned out that well, it just it just turned out to be overwhelming. It turned out to be too overwhelming, and so oh. that's what you have to be careful of. But in general, yeah, our blueprint and what we intend on experiencing, we have the ability, we have the strength to endure it, we have the ability to weather that. So, and, and you kind of want to adopt that philosophy and that way of thinking. Yeah, I it's planned a it. Thing. Yeah. yeah. It gives you the power to feel like, well, I, of course I can deal with this. I. Pick it. <laughs> I've got the tools to do it. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and you'll note that in your everyday life, there's things that are, you know, you kind of move through effortlessly, but other people, your friends or maybe someone in your family has a big problem with. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, that's something that you've mastered in other lifetimes. And so you're not, we, we, we're not challenged by those things we've mastered in other lifetimes, so. That's true. Um, I also had a question. Is it recorded in our, in the Akash that we come in with guardian angels to watch over us and keep us on plant, planet before it's our time to exit? Or is that something that wouldn't show up there? In the Akash? Well, we come in with our guides, and um, if we were to meet these guides, if we were to meet these um, ethereal beings, they would certainly appear to be angels to us. Uh, but these are beings that we um, have had many lifetimes with in terms of being our guide. They have a special energetic relationship with us. They actually share part of our DNA, which is one of the reasons why we get we can access, we can communicate with them, that type of thing. Mm 
So in terms of our guides, they're, are they just, they're just regular people. They're not like, maybe you could call them light beings or maybe they aren't light beings. They're just, I mean, light body or beings that weren't human before. Um, you're saying the majority or what they are are well they may have they may have had incarnations with you um, um, the same way when you go home when you go back to the other side of the veil you might actually function as a guide for someone else right so yeah okay I, but there's a, there is this special energetic bond that we have with them and um, we tend to go back a long ways with them. So, and typically most people will have three, as you can imagine, three is a special number. So. Right, definitely. Um, have you been able to look at future possibilities uh, or outcomes for the United States within the next five or 10 years from reading people or, uh, what the, those t timeline possibilities might look like. Is that something that anybody's ever asked you to look at for them? Or like if you were going to move to a certain area or I like San Francisco uh, falling off the, <laughs> <laughs> should falling I move? Into the water. <laughs> yeah, should I move to San Francisco? <laughs> That's well, it's a great question. Um, uh, the Akash will never tell you what to do. No. The notion is, is that they would usurp your free will if they did that. However, they will give you some options and they might make some suggestions and it might provide, it might enlighten you to some potentialities that you hadn't considered. Oh. Uh, so, um, but specifically with respect to what's going to happen in the U.S., um, what I see, I see a synergy and I see a coming together of the light workers. And so I honestly expect that within five years, we're going to look back at this time and we're going to say to ourselves, wasn't that a crazy time? And so I think we're going to be past so many things. So. Oh big sigh of relief for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and certainly within 10 years, and I think part of that will be um, 2022 is a big year of revelation in terms of what it is that we understand about things. And a lot of that, uh, I mean, every, every day there's a revelation kind of on the news about someone or something. And that's an awareness, and that begins to shift the attitude of people. It begins to kind of shift how they're thinking about things. And so, a new awareness, um, a new perspective, and, and so I see the energy shifting. So. Oh, that's fantastic. Woo! <laughs> oh, I'm so happy to look forward to that. Um, also, I wonder if you looked into climate change, if you know you you were able to see any of that through um, through the um, through the records. I haven't looked into climate change per se, um, but there's some great light beings out there, like Cryon, who's channeled by Lee Carroll, of right. course, and he's talked a fair amount about that. And what he has indicated is is that. Um, the warming that we're going through is largely part of a cycle and um, it's not entirely caused by this um, you know carbon economy that we are that we're part of right now so um, in terms of global warming I, I think that it's something that's going to resolve itself I live in near Las Vegas, so we're a little hot. I know, I know. We don't need to get hotter. I know. Well, we've had a couple of hundred degree days up here. Oh, yeah. Where I am. And so, yeah, there has been 
and last year was literally the hottest summer recorded in our history so but it's good to know that you know it may be a cycle and and it's natural a weather cycle and that will you know get back to more normal temperatures after and you know it's a relief to know that it's possible that you know we might not suffer total climatic disaster everywhere but i mean that in terms of the earthquakes aren't they getting a little more active now they are and um as earth energies change um i think it's i think these things are a natural result uh, of that true. and so um we have the magnetic grid which is shifting there's a crystalline grid which is changing uh, and there's a gaia grid which is shifting in energy and if all of these things happened all at once of course it would be cataclysmic and so oh, i think that yeah. there there are I think that's uh, it's Gaia's way of just kind of slowly shifting. Right, and you mentioned a crystalline grid, and I've worked with some grids before, but I didn't even. It's been years. So, a, how would you view the crystalline grid? Would, would it be something we could work with, and you know, like work, workers work with? Yeah. Cryon has described it as oh. the grid of communication. So it is, uh, it's actually a grid where all of our thoughts, all of our intentions move into this grid. Oh. So <clears throat> some people- That's important. <laughs> it's really important. And um, it's um, people that do experimentation with collective intention, they know that their intent, their energy, that it's going into this grid. Some people refer to it as the field. And, um, and that energy is a conscious energy and um, it changes things. So in other words, we have the ability through our consciousness to end intent, to place that energy into the field and there are real physical results. Oh, I'm going to have to do some homework on that. That yeah. sounds fantastic. Like, well, Lynn, I mean, yeah, Lynn McTaggart has, for some years now, she's been doing her um, experiments of collective intent. Uh, the movie, The One Field, um, that's a great movie. I highly yeah. recommend it to anybody. Theonefield.com. Field.com. Okay. I'm writing all this down and taking notes. <laughs> I'm going to watch that. Uh, that's kind of exciting to know there's another way to shift things. Um, that's, that's great. Uh, I also wondered, I heard before that you might be reading Galactic Akash. Is that something that you do or um, with the help of a person's guides um, I am able to um, go back in terms of that being scholastic galactic history so for example if their first incarnation into the Milky Way was in Vega or Lyra I, I would tend to be able to access that information. And then, of course, if they transitioned from Lyra to Vega to the Pleiades or to uh, Arcturus or the Syrian system, I would tend to be able to access that. But yes, these light at star seeds, these lifetimes that we've had in the other systems, it does affect our DNA. It does, uh, there are characteristics that we'll have. There are skills, there are gifts that we will tend to have based on these other highly advanced um, cultures. Yeah. So. 
I'm going to have to have another reading with you. <laughs> Get into my galactic. <laughs> oh yeah, many of the people that I have uh, done readings for, um, you know, they have had lifetimes within the Pleiades, or they are Arcturian, or they're Syrian, or they're an Orion. Um, and uh, there may be some trauma because of what happened when the Draco people attacked uh, the Lyra and the Vagan cultures. And so it's, um, yeah, we're much, even before we came to Earth, we're, we're, we're much older than we think of ourselves. Oh, yeah, so, definitely. So the Draco, are they, st they're here running things <laughs> I, I don't think I don't think they're running things I think, I don't uh, know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think they're I think those things were settled a long time ago okay. so <laughs> you know you hear stuff and you go oh. <laughs> oh anyway I try not to put my mind on things that aren't useful <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, it's useful if it was really something you had to break out of. But um, we're already doing a good job, it sounds like, which I'm happy about in terms of bringing light. And maybe if some of us work a little more with the crystalline grid and put our intentions out there more, going to look into that. So, um, so you have read the Akash for people who have been Palladians or, you know, you are. Yes. yes. Yeah. So were they part of Lemuria or Atlantis? Did they come down and start that? Well, um, many of us, our first incarnations were in Lemuria and Lemuria was colonized about 220,000 years ago by the Palladians. And of course, you probably know that it was the intent of the Palladians to genetically seed us. Right. And so, or genetically seed the original humans at the time. Mm -hmm. And if we think of the Palladians as our mothers, the Arturians would be our grandmothers. And right. so there is this lineage. Um, right. In fact, um, layers seven, eight, and nine, uh, three of those ethereal layers are actually referred to as Lemurian layers. Oh. And so, for example, the eighth layer of our DNA is <coughs> where our Akash is resident. <clears throat> our Akash is also resident within the crystal cave of creation, and that's more of a metaphor of a quantum energy in place. But, so we have, um, it's this, uh, it's the light strands, it's the ethereal aspects of our being that we can thank the Lemurians for. Definitely. I know I was there because you told me. <laughs> oh, it's all good. Um, uh, what, what is your sense, Robert, of this Earth plane being a holographic universe? Like, a, we know it's a training ground for souls and all, but I mean, is are we being projected here, and it's just all illusion? I mean, just holographic. I don't think of it as holographic. Um, the uh, it's kind of an interesting question because our concepts actually establish our physical reality. So we believe in linear time. And it's that conscious belief system that actually creates linear time for us here. Right. right. So um, I see it as um, I see it as a dimension, 
and um, that part of us is kind of experiencing and sharing. And of course, part of us is already within the fifth dimension. So, so. Oh, that, that makes sense. That makes sense. And I know we definitely create our reality with our thoughts. So <laughs> that yeah. idea that we buy into linear time yeah, this is, this is kind of an esoteric notion, but I've actually come to think and to believe that the veil is not something that's actually there. So that's it. Words, I totally agree with you. So in other words, if um, that the veil is actually something that we have, it's a construct within our consciousness. And so do we really exist in duality? Well, if I don't believe the veil is there, or I believe I can transcend it anytime I want to, mm -hmm. then, uh, then, then we do, then we, then we move through it, then we're able to move through it, so. Absolutely, oh, that is a really, really powerful point you brought up. And it sort of frees our mind uh, if we can, you know, embrace that we are yeah. we are this <laughs> we are this powerful spark of all that is and we are only boxed in by you know whatever our constructs okay. are <laughs> yeah if i believe that um, the veil is really this wall that uh then it then it becomes a wall for me right. so true so. that's that just opens that doorway way up <laughs> so, that's powerful wow that is a really a great way to understand how things how we keep ourselves down in this box you can use that in so many ways um i also um I'm just skipping my some of my questions here. Um, so you, I did want to ask this, but I think it's probably true that there are a large number of people who've had Palladian lifetimes that are incarnated on the Earth now to do this light work and a lot, a lot, a lot. Yes, absolutely. Right. So this momentous time. I'm getting the chills that we're here right now. Uh, we were so excited to incarnate right now and be here, right? <laughs> we were. <laughs> we, have to... <laughs> we have to remember that. We, just... we chose this time. We chose, chose this time. <laughs> and we're here with great purpose. So yes. we can't lose sight of that. Can't lose sight of that. That is very important um, to remember. Uh, also, I wanted to know if you have any secrets to living in this current timeline to stay balanced and connected to divine source. Um, you know how things can take you out of it. Maybe you hear something in the news or, you know, life happens, but you want to pull yourself back into that space of being connected. Um, to your higher self or your soul self or yeah absolutely very much so and um, that's where I go so for example um, I trend well first off it's uh, remembering your magnificence and so you're much greater than the corporeal being that is sitting here and um, where I go for that peace or that balance is, is I transcend the veil to merge with the soul aspect of myself. And the soul aspect of myself is in unity with creative source. And so it is an incredibly loving and peaceful place to be. So you can go there for healing or you can just go there for a respite, a rest. Oh, that's fantastic. And wow. So, so, I just got a sense of that. And, uh, <laughs> wow. So imagine, yeah, imagine, uh, and, and we all have the ability, it takes sometimes a little bit of practice, but we all have the ability to, you know, 
merge with the soul aspect of ourself, which is the greater, the magnificent part of our being. Wow. And so it's a very healing experience. And wow. it feels like it would be amazing. I, I'm going to have to try that after. <laughs> after <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, back in that space. Yeah, yeah. Reach out to spirit. Reach out to your guides. Ask them for a little bit of help in that process. Mm -hmm. I hope in the not too distant future to be able to teach my method how I do it. That's what I was going to ask you, and of course I will uh, link your your website in the description uh, of this video. And um, uh, I'll be having another reading with you, but <laughs> <laughs> but I also, you know, I just want to say, you know, all your all the concepts that you've shared, uh, you've shared some extremely powerful golden information here in this video. So I am just like beyond thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, you're, that you're here and that you came on my channel. Well, know. I'm uh, yeah, I'm thrilled to see you know that um, after having a chat with me, you've stepped into your mastery, yes. you've stepped into your, your purpose. So your chat. That's very <laughs> changed <exciting>. my life, <laughs> <laughs> which I am very grateful for. And um, oh. you know, I thank you so much. Um, I, I really, really do. I mean, it was just life changing to have the uh, Akashic re attunement reading, whatever it is, it does it. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully, at the end of the day, it gives you that sense of peace um, yeah. in terms of finding a peaceful place, that um, body soul fusion. Um, that's what I do. And. Um, what happens is is that you um, there's a piece that comes to you so the trappings the noise the challenges of everyday life you're not you don't feel overwhelmed by it, it you, you're looking at it much, you're looking at all of that stuff much differently and if you think about the great masters here on earth whether it's Jesus of Nazareth or Buddha or Muhammad they had that countenance there was uh, you could not um, you could not really disturb them you they could you know you couldn't create a place for them to go that was unbalanced so right that is a wow that is such a powerful place to be able to be at and resonate with and oh, i want to be there <laughs> yeah <laughs> we all do <laughs> We, I'm gonna be we, trying all of that. <laughs> we all we all would love that level of mastery. There's absolutely no doubt about it. Um, and if we all, if we all had it, it would be a different world we live in. So wouldn't it? Oh <laughs> gosh, it really would. But you gave me a lot of hope for the future in many ways, and a lot of homework to do now <laughs> <laughs> on the crystalline grid and all kinds of things. But uh, I wanted to thank you for coming on my show and um, you know maybe in the future you grace me with your presence again um, we'll absolutely well it's been a pleasure thank uh, you so much thank you for having me on oh, so. I can't even tell you how happy I am that you came on so I just want to tell all my friends out there uh, get a reading with Robert it it's a once in a lifetime. No, you'll want to go more than once. It's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it Thank shifts you. everything. <laughs> it's like gold. It's liquid gold. Anyway, uh, we'll be signing off for now and say goodbye to Robert. Um, thank you so much for being on my show and well, thank you for asking me to be here. So it's been a pleasure. Yeah, so. My pleasure. Thank you.